Okay. Friday Night Dynamite. Back again. Wow, this... There was a lot to say about this show tonight when it comes to Friday Night Dynamite. Which, how, what are y'all like, what, week three, week four, I believe? I think next week will be on a Saturday next week. But, yeah, folks, Dynamite, Friday again. What do we got going on this week? Uh... We kick it off with the cage fight or MMA cage fight for Jay Kager and Warlow. Uh, wow, this... I can say this right now. A lot of MMA experts are going to rip this apart. Even my co-host ripped this match apart tonight. And or if you want to call this a match. But this was an MMA style cage fight. So yeah, uh, AEW just turned into UFC right here. With Jay Kager who came out with Chris Jericho. As Warlow came out with... Sean Spears, and there were three five-minute rounds in this match. Like I said, this was very MMA stuff. The presentation of this, it made it look like this was UFC. They had the cage, they had the rules set up. I don't know if they had the judges in that or and everything, but they tried to do their best to make it look like a UFC cage. And I didn't have a problem with this at first. The first round was okay, all right, but. Here's the thing that got it was the punches. A lot of the punches look like shit. And it got to the point where, where is a lot of this going? There was some good takedowns or whatnot, but the punches just either looked really all over the place. They looked like they didn't, it looked like it was moving in slow motion, or it just didn't even connect all the way. And, you know, one thing I laughed at this was when fucking Wardlow does a Hurricane Rana on Hager in this smash. I'm sitting there like, wait a minute. This dude just did a Hurricane Rana in a UFC like type of style match. And this is a work, let me remind. You. This is even a shoot. This is a work. Some say both of these guys look gassed after the first round or two or whatnot and just sweating their ass off. But I, I you know, I, it wasn't bad. I thought it was okay and whatnot, but the the, the punches just I, I don't know, man. So, some of that stuff, it just is like, okay, are we trying to do an MMA fight? Or are we trying to do a wrestling match here? What, where are we going for? Like, where are we going with this? Because I wasn't even sure half the time where this whole MMA cage fight was really going, okay? Like I said, my other friend, he was just like, fuck this match. Because he, he, this is the mini side of Eric Karana. He was, he was done. He was like, done, done with this, with this whole thing, uh, okay? I, 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 I don't know. Well, well, I, I don't know what I can take from this. I, I don't really know what I can say about this whole MMA cage fight. So, yeah, that, that's that's how um, that's how I, I can really go on with this, though. So, like I said, the, the punches just looked bad. And that, that Hurricane Rana just... I don't know. But Jake Hager did win the fight, though, since he ended up doing, like, a Uranagi into some... Submission hole, which Warlow did not tap out, so Hager won. I guess Hager's gonna go fist bumped in, but Spears attacked him from behind. Jericho got involved in. MJF came out and attacked Jericho then right after, taking off his arm brace, going you know for salt of the earth submission move. MJ, uh, not MJF, but um, MJF let it go because Dean Malenko had got involved. And then uh, MJF ended up punching Dean Malenko to the ground. Sammy Guevara's music hit. And then he ended up getting in the, in the uh, cage and just start chasing everybody off then after that. So uh, I guess I already announced um, Guevara versus MJF coming up soon then. But yeah, like I said, this, this whole thing was questionable at the same time too. Uh, next, Eddie Kingston, uh, Kazarian, and Pentagon were in the back. As Kazarian cut this promo, used a lot of Bible scriptures and whatnot about seeking revenge and whatnot. And I guess, you know, he's still going after the elite. Kingston said, you better pray we don't take y'all souls and whatnot. Uh, but right after, they went to Team Taz doing a promo. Taz basically talked about, uh, you know, this team and whatnot. Hobbs had tried to say something, but Taz said, like, hey, Cage left you behind. And I guess they start calling out Hangman Page again. So next Saturday, it's going to be Hangman versus um, Powerhouse Hobbs. Darby Allen went against Ethan Page of Scorpio Sky or the men of the year Q Schoolboy uh, Q Schoolboy Q music. Listen, there's a lot that doesn't make sense about this. It's basically 50 50 booking in a way. Now I know it's not the same tag match, but it's almost 50 50 booking. Alright. And it wasn't a bad handicap match, but here's the thing. Why did Darby really need to accept this match? It's like, you already beat these guys. 
and we're not using Sting again here. So let's do a handicap. Why? Because we need to give Sky and Ethan Page their win back so we can have some type of 50 50 booking going on. Now, some would think, uh, and, and looks like our friend Al said, hey, they could have faced some other teams and then eventually go back after Darby and Sting. But no, let's immediately put Sky and Page against Darby right now, which you know, I know some probably thought Darby would have won, especially when she kind of like you know, tied Ethan Page's legs together and whatnot in a zip tie and just kind of leave him straggling around and whatnot. But Page, you know, again, like his um, razor's edge or ego's edge onto Darby Allen for the win, uh, you know, to take him out. But still, it's like 50-50 booking. So don't be surprised if another tag match happens. Like, I'm sure Sting will be involved in the next one, but do not be surprised if we see a rematch from this, okay? It wasn't a bad match, but at the same time, why did we really need to see this? And at the same time, it's, you know, it's two of these guys. Man, they had a hard time taking down Darby Allen out there, okay? Like, these guys, like they went to war out there. <laughs> My Cole said they was tired and everything. Like, by God, you couldn't take out one dude, and it took you that guys damn near, what, 12 minutes for this match? So, um, it's, it's a, in a way, you got to think about that at the same time, too. But, yeah, it's 50-50 booking, folks. So, Paige and Sky get their win back. Orange Cassidy went against Cesar... Banani, why is this match on my TV? This should have been on Dark. Why? Why? This was bad. I'm looking at this, whatever, with what Ziggler's brother and Peter Avalon and whatnot. This looks like another version of the beautiful people. Because every time they just kept throwing Cassidy out, it's like they kept trying to groom him and put a jacket and put the hairspray on him and whatnot. I don't know. This all was just some goofball shit out here. You should just put this on dark. Why was this even on TV? Some would say, why is this on TV? Because Orange Cassidy. That's why it's on Dynamite. That's why they have to put it on TV, because it's Orange Cassidy. This is like Tony Khan's favorite wrestler anyway, so that's why this is on TV. I didn't need to see it on here. I don't mind Chris Stylander or whatnot, but everybody else involved in this, it's like, once again, put this shit on dark. Why do you have this on TV? Why? This, this was just some goofball shit. Cassidy got the win. That's that's all you need to know. So, I I don't I don't know what the fuck that was. So that that was just that was bad. Um, John Boy was being interviewed. Was about to be interviewed until Omega and crew showed up. Don Callis and Michael knock and knock and knock and knock and knock and get off my TV. Uh, showed up basically in a golf cart. Omega basically saying, uh, you know. Uh, we're, we're coming for you, Jungle Boy. You're like, come on, man. You want to prove tough you are. We're going to fight you now. We're going to get your ass right now. We're going to go in your ass. We want that ass. We got that ass. Pause, pause, pause. By half the shit Omega was saying out there. And uh, Jungle Boy said, I'd rather beat you in the ring for the title next week. And Omega's just calling him out and whatnot. Jungle Boy uh, basically took off his jacket and everything. It was ready to fight. Um, Omega attacked him then, which they did brawl for a second, Nakazawa ended up throwing Jungle Boy off, and then Omega and crew, which looked like some Saturday morning cartoon villain, should say, I'm gonna get you next week, it's like, I'll get you next time, Jungle Boy, I'll get you next week, you just watch out, as, you know, they left, um, Nakazawa behind, and Omega and Callus drove off. In a way, I didn't hate the segment all the way, but maybe because of Jungle Boy's part, but I just felt like the Omega shit was a little bit too over the top, though, especially like, we want your ass, we're going to get in that ass, we're going to get in that, okay, man, pause with that shit for real, all right, just, just, just pause, and then the whole Saturday morning cartoon villain, I'll get you next week, it's, it's like, I'll get you this next week, I'm going to get you this time, man, it was bad, and like, I'm, I'm going I'm to get you next week, that's some stuff you see from some Saturday morning cartoon villain type of thing, all right, I'll, I'll get you next week, Gadget, or just like some Go Go Gadget cartoon or something. I don't know. But um, I'm going to get you next week, man. Um, next. Matt Hardy and crew in the back. Christian Cage shows up. I think the Butcher or the Blade, or maybe it was just the Blade, pushed Matt Hardy into a cage and basically um, telling Christian Cage to just go retire, which a kid, I'm giving you an out right now. Uh, Cody Rhodes in the debut with Brock Anderson versus, uh, QT Marshall and, um, Aaron Solo. They had a go-go, not a go-go, Camarato Solo, a go-go, Camarato Solo, a go-go. Uh, what, what do I have to say about this? Listen, 
Brock Anderson, I'm sure there's a lot of jokes you can make, especially when it comes to him and Arn Anderson, that this guy, like, he was 40 years old out there. But then again, people have always said Arn Anderson looked as old as he is for years now, and he wasn't really that age. Even when he was young, they said he looked old. Um, listen, he's not bad or anything. And, you know, I, I look at Cody sometimes. Yeah, well, every time I say when a Cody match comes on, it's in its own universe. And, listen, I, I think he just had his kid today, I believe. I know I saw a lot of jokes about... You know, Cody, he's ended racism and whatnot. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure he'll have a grand entrance and some big promo. His next I Have a Dream Part 2 speech he'll have coming out since he's had his kid. Even my friend said this uh, tonight, you know, I, I think he named his kid, what, Liberty? Like, you know, he is on the nose with it. Like, Cody is trying to be Captain America 2.0 sometimes, I feel like. This feud, though, um, like I said, Brock, and Brock Anderson, he wasn't bad, but... As a lot would say, he's got a long ways to go, all right? But like I said, the guy, he just looks like he's 40 years old. I'm surprised he just didn't get the win with, uh, like, the whole double-A spine buster, like, Arn. But they just had him, like, what, win with, like, a jackknife pin or whatnot. Because, uh, what, Cody, he went after QT. I guess he let Arn and Brock have their moment after they won. But still, though, I thought he would have won with at least, like, a double-A spine buster. But... Brock Anderson, the, the guy's still green out there. I'm just surprised they stuck him into this um, somewhat of a high-level feud <clears throat> right now with Cody and whatnot. But it's like, hey, you know, Arn's part of it, so let's 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 add uh, his son Brock in there. So he he, he wasn't he he wasn't bad, but he does look like Arn a lot. Jake Roberts is in the back cutting a promo with Lance Archer at some disclosed location about the slap Archer, but um. I don't know, Archer said he had to go. Uh, JR sat down with um, Andrade El Idolo. He looked like Black Mass for a second. It was pretty cool, Los Ingo Bernabes. But, uh, you know, um, JR brought up, you know, the AEW title and TNT title. I'm sure on your radar right now uh, for Andrade. Andrade said he deserved those opportunities for both of those titles, he says. And even, uh, you know, they brought up, like, why is he working with Vicky Guerrero? And he said that she understands the business and that, you know, she's come up with Eddie Guerrero or whatnot. And he's a third generation wrestler. And they have a great connection. And, you know, it's going to be a surprise coming soon. So, uh, you know, by the way, he has subtitles for his promo also. But he said it would be a surprise coming from um, Andrade and Vicky coming soon. So we'll see what goes on with that. Um, Hangman Page was in the back with the Dark Order. I still don't know where this is going sometime. Uh, I guess, you know, he said John Silver's coming back soon. And, you know, Evil Uno put up a fight against Miro last week. And um, why does he hang with these guys again? I, I, I don't know. Which, you know, they asked him about, what, the whole title match n next week. And I guess he was just kind of focused on the tag match and what his match is this week. I don't know what they got doing. Hangman Page sometimes is a mystery. Like, I'm glad he's getting wins, but... I still don't get why he's still hanging with these guys. I, I really don't understand at this point. Why is he still hanging around them? Um, Juilliard went against Penelope Ford. Good God, this match was very bad. And I'm sure it'll be on Botchamania or any botch channel on YouTube or Twitter and whatnot. But this match was not good. Penelope Ford, who actually got a win, which I don't even remember the last time she ever had a win in general, won the match. But yeah, this match was not good, okay? Um... Rapid before one, Miro came out, which probably the best thing out of this whole little segment uh, was him, you know, talking about it wasn't fair that four was our number three to one, and that uh, Miro, he said that he is God's champion and whatnot. <laughs> I thought that was great. He's he really, yeah, I like, I, I, I like to thank you, Christ and God, for me being the champion for my power right now. That's, he does that a lot, but Miro basically said, you know, uh, Forrest had a rough in the past few months from the wedding and her husband being injured thanks to Miro and whatnot. Uh, next thing you know, um, what, he attacks Griff Garrison. Brian Pillman jumps onto him. Referees end up breaking it up then as uh, Miro was laughing and whatnot as Pillman tried to come after him. But yeah, the best thing out of this was just the Miro promo right after because that match was not good. Um, Britt Baker and Rebel will be interviewed in the back. Vicky Guerrero basically said that, um, you know, Nala Rose is going to be getting a shot at the title i guess pretty soon baker said i'm out here to play games and you know um since vicky um you know said she brought andrade in and that tony Connell's a favorite it's gonna be a tag match coming up 
Uh, Baker and Rebel versus um, Vicky Guerrero and Nyla Rose. God help us. Why is this even a match on TV? I don't know, but it does not sound good. Uh, they had a very, really great video package on FTR and Santana Ortiz. Um, and whatnot. I go back and look at that. That was really good. I guess they talked about AEW trying... I know they talked about this week trying to go to New York or Queen, trying to sell out some tennis building. We'll see how that goes. In the main event, though, Pentagon, who has translator back this week. Where has he been? Uh, Eddie Kingston and Kaz Kazarian and whatnot going against... Matt Jackson and the Good Brothers, Don Callis was on commentary. Hey, he's not an executive anymore, but um, he was on commentary. Listen, this six-man tag, it wasn't bad. Sometimes like a tornado tag out there, given that it's Rick Knox refereeing, and just the match just loses itself sometimes and just goes all over the place, which I don't even understand where they go with Rick Knox. Just just him in these matches is just makes no sense half the time, all right? Uh, Nick Jackson came out with the cold spray, taking uh, Penta out with it. Carl Anderson just got this big neck breaker off the top rope on the Pentagon, uh, winning the match as the Elite celebrated right after then. So, yeah, that was the end of the show from there. The, the show was okay tonight, just given maybe the main event. It wasn't a bad six-man. Um, what else? The cage fight, you could take that. Either way, I thought the FTR Santana Ortiz video package wasn't that bad. Um, what, what else? The, try man, but the tag match with Cody and Brock Anderson wasn't bad. Like I said, Brock did okay on his debut. The show was okay, all right? It wasn't that much to talk about, but it was okay. It still has its problems out there. I thought the Jay Cargo promo was actually pretty good with that Sterling guy and whatnot, wherever that's going, but the show was okay at best. It, it wasn't that great, but hey, at least it'll be on a Saturday next week. And I don't gotta watch both of these things back to back, all right? So, yeah, AEW was okay for this week. It was okay. But some things, I just don't understand what's going on in this show. Like, why am I seeing this? Why am I seeing that? Why am I even seeing an MMA cage fight on a wrestling show? Like I said, get ready for the UFC experts to respond to that, and you'll see how that goes out with them. But, yeah, the show was okay. All right? But other than that, I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe, find me on Twitter, at Hooded Night 90. See you then. Peace out.